Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hawksons here, back with another Call of Duty Mobile video. Now, speaking of COD Mobile, this video is actually sponsored by COD Mobile, so I just want to give a massive shout out and thank you to COD Mobile for sponsoring this video. Now, I'm sure as a lot of you guys probably already know, Season 9 just dropped inside of COD Mobile, and along with the Season 9 update, we got a crazy amount of weapon changes. And basically what this video is going to be is me going over a ton of those weapon changes so you guys can kind of know what's changed, I guess. I'm still testing all of the weapons and specifically I got to get testing the attachments. More than likely what I'll do is I'll make separate videos for each gun in regards to the attachments. So I'll make like a gun guide video for each weapon. And we'll probably start that series with what I consider to be the best weapons just so you guys can kind of learn how to build those weapons right, right off the beginning. And then we'll probably do kind of the worst weapons as we go on. But those videos will be more so covering the attachments and what the attachments do to the weapons and what I would recommend for each individual weapon. Whereas this video is just kind of letting you guys know what the weapon changes were for this season as opposed to past seasons. So basically what the buffs and nerfs are to the ARs, LMGs, and SMGs. We won't be doing the snipers, shotguns, pistols, or uh, rocket launchers just because those weapons are a little bit different and I kind of wanted to make this video be more focused on the, the main weapons that most people do use. The stats that I did actually test on the weapons today is going to be the damage, the range, the fire rate, the time to kill, the magazine size, and I think there's one more. Oh yeah, the body multiplier. So like how much damage you deal to different parts of the body. I will make it so it's super easy to follow. So if you're kind of scared by the word stats, don't worry. It's going to be super simple to follow. Basically, we'll be just going uh, gun through gun through gun as fast as we possibly can. There definitely are other stats that did change on the weapons like recoil, uh, ADS speeds, movement speed, stuff like that. But we're not going to be talking about that in this video will more than likely be talking about it for each individual gun in their individual gun guides just because those stats will take me a long time to gather and i'd rather just do it for each individual gun as opposed to this video being focused on like the the biggest changes of the weapons okay so i know that was kind of a long intro but now let's just go ahead and get right into the video starting with the assault rifles all right, so the very first assault rifle we're going to be looking at is going to be the ASM-10. It did actually get a fire rate buff, so the old fire rate was 500 rounds per minute. Now it is 543 rounds per minute. They also did tweak the ranges of the weapon a little bit. Before it was 0 to 20 meters was 34 damage, 21 to 30 meters was 26 damage, 31 meters to 45 meters was 22 damage, and uh, 46 meters and above was 20 damage. But now they adjusted it a little bit. It was kind of like a buff and a nerf at the same time. Now it is 0 to 18 meters is 34 damage, which is a 3-shot kill. 19 meters to 37 meters is 26 damage, which is a 4-shot kill. And then 38 meters and above is 20 damage, which is a 5-shot kill. Also, I did make new graphs, basically just showing how many shots to kill. Um, it is for like each different range which is basically just color-coded as you can see. And also just to let you guys know, unless you didn't know, STK is shots to kill. Assuming the player is full HP, obviously if they're lower HP, it will be different. But most of the time when you take a fight with someone, they're gonna be full HP, I'd say like 90% of the time. Also, the faster fire rate is gonna affect the time to kill a little bit. So now the ASM-10 can kill faster at basically all ranges. So with the charts you're looking at right now, essentially the lower the number, the faster the gun actually kills. And it is in milliseconds if you were curious. So as you can see, close range, the SM-10 will be killing in 221 milliseconds as opposed to 241 in the past. So it's a decent amount faster. Okay, with the first weapon, we did go through that one a little bit slower just because I had to explain a couple terms, but now you guys will understand how this works. So we can kind of just breeze through the weapons. So the next one is gonna be the AK-117. The AK-117 did actually get some range adjustments. So as you guys can see on your screen right now, the range was adjusted so that now the gun can actually deal 25 damage from zero to four meters. What this means is the gun can four shot uh, up again up to four meters now. So you're gonna have a very fast time to kill at this range. And also the damage was buffed a little bit up to 21 meters from 22 damage to 23 damage. And then after that, their damage was nerfed from 20 to 18, but that range does extend a little bit further. And then the very far range, which is 36 meters and above, now uh, is going to be 16 damage from 17 damage so that was nerfed a little bit so basically what they did to the ak-117 is they made it a little bit better close range and a little bit worse long range again i didn't test the recoil yet i will do that when i actually test each individual gun uh, so i don't know how the recoil has changed but it does seem like the ak-117 will be a little bit better of an aggressive weapon now next up is going to be the man of war one significant difference that they did have to this weapon is they changed the magazine size from 30 to 20 and then they also changed the range and damages va values uh, of this weapon I'm not going to read off all the numbers right now because this video will be way too long if we do that, but you guys can clearly see right now side by side uh, the range values and damage values. And as you can tell, it is a little bit different. And they also did actually remove the range where you would deal 30 damage with the Man of War. 
And if you guys are wondering how this affects the time to kill, you can see that on your screen right now. And time to kill will be basically the same. It's just kind of adjusted at different ranges. Next up is going to be the M4. They actually did buff the M4's fire rate just a little bit. It went from 659 RPM to 684 RPM, which will affect the time to kill just a little bit. And you guys can see that on your screen right now. Next up is going to be the ICR. They did buff and nerf it a little bit, so just kind of adjusted it. Uh, the fire rate did go from 624 RPM to 598, so it was a very small fire rate nerf, but they did actually buff the damages and range values. And you guys can see that on your screen right now. As you can tell, it did go from 24 damage from uh, 0 to 10 meters to 25 damage from 0 to 15 meters. Essentially, what this means now is that the ICR can four shot up close, and honestly, that was the biggest negative of the ICR. It was that it couldn't four shot up close, so it was a very slow killing gun uh, at like a closer range. So now the weapon is much more versatile and I'm definitely predicting that we will see it a lot more in this season. And then you guys can see the other weapon adjustments, which really wasn't that big with the ranges. Next up is the HVK-30. Now I'm clueless on what happened with this one because the HVK-30 was not a great weapon and it seems like they actually kind of nerfed it. As you can tell, the old range values was 0 to 31 meters was 24 damage, 32 meters to 50 meters was 17 damage, and then 51 meters and above was 16. And as you can see, they actually nerfed it to 20, 18, and 16, which is really weird. I guess, well, the close range was nerfed from 24 damage to 20, and the mid range was actually buffed from 17 to 18. But over Overall, this won't affect the time to kill at all. The shots to kill will be the exact same and everything. So it just kind of seems like a small adjustment that they made, which does seem kind of odd because I personally believe the HBK actually needed a small buff. But yeah, so that's all they did for the HBK in terms of the uh, fire rate, damage, range, uh, mag size, stuff like that. Again, they could have changed like the recoil, um, the ADS speed, stuff like that. But again, haven't tested that quite yet. Now we're moving on to the SMGs, which saw a lot of changes this season, like a very significant amount. First one we're going to look at is probably one of the biggest buffs of this entire season, and that is going to be the MSMC. Now with the MSMC, they actually buffed the fire rate, which is crazy. Uh, they buffed it from 878 RPM to 923, so a small buff there. Then this is probably the most significant buff of the weapon. They actually buffed the damage and range values by a small amount, but it was just kind of crossing the area of going from a five shot kill to a four shot kill so it is going to be a pretty significant buff in that regard so as you can tell up to eight meters the weapon can deal 25 damage now so it can four shot just like it could back in like seasons one through four maybe i don't know for sure but it is kind of reverted to the the older msmc with a small fire rate buff there and then you guys can see the rest of the damage values on your screen right now and one other nerf that they did is they did make it so that to the legs now you'll deal 90 percent damage before you just deal the normal damage that you always do to the whole body except the head would get a boosted headshot multiplier now you actually do it 90 percent damage to the leg so it is going to be reduced a little bit what this means for the weapon is that you do want to be aiming for the upper body with it and if again you're up to eight meters you will be able to four shot with it which is a very 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 fast time to kill which you can see on your screen right now. So that is gonna be it for the MSMC. Now we're gonna move over to the Razorback, which essentially was a PDW last season. It had the exact same stats, basically all the way around, except for like the gun sound and the uh, iron sights, I believe. But now it is its own completely a new weapon. Uh, and we'll go ahead and go through the changes that it did receive. The first change is that the magazine size went from 50 to 30. So a reduction there. The fire rate was reduced from 745 to 628. So a very large fire rate reduction but the range values were tweaked quite a bit in a very unique way so as you can tell i'm not going to go over these because there's a lot of changes but as you can tell it went from the pdw's uh, range values to its very own unique range values which is going to be 30 damage up to 16 meters 23 damage up to 23 meters and then 19 damage beyond that it also has a 1.1 headshot multiplier basically what this means is that you're going to get plus three damage close range if you hit the head which means that if you hit three headshots it's still going to be a four shot kill unfortunately you can't actually three shot to the head with this weapon if you could I feel like that'd be really cool and I kind of hope they do that uh, just because then it make it so you should really try to aim with the head for this weapon but again unfortunately that is not the case uh, so yeah so this weapon can't actually three shot so it's gonna be a four shot kill five shot kill and six shot kill depending at what range you are assuming that you're shooting someone in the open with full HP again if you're shooting through walls or something like that you're gonna get reduced damage but for most fights those are the damage values and one small nerf that it did receive is that uh, before to the legs and the stomach, you would deal 100% damage, uh, but now it is reduced down to 90% damage again to the legs and stomach. So with this weapon, you want to be aiming for the chest and above. 
Next up is the PDW, basically the same change as the MSMC and the Razorback. Uh, before you could deal 100% damage to the legs, now it is 90%. So you're gonna be wanting to aim for the upper body with the PDW now. Next up is the RUS. RUS got quite a few changes actually. Uh, first of all, we're gonna talk about the, the range and damage values. So as you can tell, here's the old range and damage values and here's the new range and damage value. So as you can tell, one of the biggest changes is that now up to five meters, you can actually four shot with the RUS, making this an even better aggressive weapon. And also the second range value, which goes up to 18 meters, actually was buffed from 22 damage up to 24 damage. Uh, but then after that, damages were reduced. So basically they did the same thing to the RUS as they did to the AK-117, making this weapon better close range and worse at long range. And another change that they did to the RUS that they did to a lot of SMGs is they actually reduced the leg damage from 100% down to 90%. So you want to be aiming for the upper body. Uh, and again, that was to the legs and lower stomach. Again, 90% damage. Next up is the GKS. The GKS received a couple changes, uh, mostly to the range and the damage values. So they actually buffed the damage from zero to 20 meters. It is now 28 damage from 25 damage. So this isn't gonna affect the shots to kill. It is pretty much gonna be the exact same in that regard. Then everything after that is nearly identical, except for they did do one other thing, and that is increase the headshot multiplier from 110% to 130%. So essentially now you're gonna be doing a ton more damage if you're hitting headshots. Now, this is actually really good because now with the GKS, you can actually three shot to the head up until 20 meters. So for the players that are extremely accurate and feel like they can hit three headshots, the GKS is going to be super, super good. Actually, let me do some math right now. You might only need like two headshots. Let me, let me double check on that. If you can hit two headshots and then one more shot anywhere in the body, it could be the chest, the head, wherever you want it, you can actually three tap with the GKS. So you don't even need to have just three headshots. It could just be two headshots. So as you can tell for the highly accurate players, the GKS is definitely gonna have a pretty nice boost. Next up is the Pharaoh. Now they did change the body multipliers on the Pharaoh. Before it was basically like you deal different damages to different parts of the body. Like you do more damage to the, the body, but less to the hands and even less to the legs. But now it is kind of reverted to the old Pharaoh where you'll deal 110% to the head and then you'll just deal normal damage everywhere below that. So with the Pharaoh, you could aim for the, the toes if you wanted to, totally fine. Uh, just make sure you're just hitting your shots and that's all that matters. Um, and again, you could be going for headshots, but the Pharaoh does take a decent amount. So for the most part, just aim anywhere in the body and you should be good to go. Next up is the HD40. The HD40 received quite a bit of changes that could make this weapon actually a very, very, very viable SMG as opposed to the old HD40, which was no good. So basically what they did to this weapon is adjust the range values a little bit and then they totally removed the range where you deal 17 damage. So now at really long range, you're gonna deal 19 damage as opposed to 17 damage. So they did make this a little bit better at longer ranges. Although this shouldn't affect your shots to kill for the most part, again, sometimes it could. Uh, again, it's, it's a very small damage buff, but you probably won't notice this too often. Where the buff really came in is they buffed the fire rate from 545 RPM to 663, which is a dramatic dramatic change i believe it's basically going from the ak-47's fire rate to the bk-57 let me go double check on that real quick yeah so basically from the ak-47's fire rate to the bk-57's fire rate so a very big buff in that regard and if you're curious how this affects the time to kills and everything i will put that on your screen right now so as you can tell a very very good buff uh, for the time to kills I'll probably do a video on this gun very soon just because I think this is kind of the dark horse of the season. Not a lot of people know it's really good, but again, it received a very nice buff. Next up is the Chickum. The Chickum received a couple changes here. So the first one is that the max size went down from 36 to 33. And then for the range and damage values, they adjusted those a decent amount, including upping the damage. So as you guys can, you guys can see all that on your screen right now. And then the biggest change that they actually did for the chicken is that they changed the body multiplier. So before it'd be 100% damage to the body and then 110% damage to the head. So just like basically all guns, but they adjusted this pretty heavily now. So now you'll actually deal 140% damage, which is insane to the head. Uh, you'll deal 130% damage to the chest. 130% damage to the arms, upper arms actually, so like right here, and then to the lower arms, which is like the forearm to the, the fingertips, uh, the upper stomach and lower stomach, you'll deal normal damage, so the damages I just showed you, and then to the legs, you'll deal 90% damage, so reduced damage. So with the chicken, be aiming as high on the body as you possibly can, and if you're able to do that, you're gonna be able to three shot with this weapon, basically, I believe up to uh, 16 meters. Let me go double check on that. So yeah, if you're actually able to hit 
uh three headshots with the chickum you can actually three tap all the way up to 16 meters and up to nine meters all you have to do is be hitting uh chest shots so yeah the chickum can actually one burst now so for the very skilled players that can hit the upper body very well this is going to be actually pretty a pretty good gun again i haven't tested it too much uh, outside of just like the, the weapon stats i haven't actually used it but it does seem like if you're very accurate the chickum can be a very very solid gun uh whereas maybe the pharaoh is going to be more like a spammy weapon because obviously you can deal good damage to any parts on the body so it seems like the pharaoh is like a hit fire just spray and pray uh whereas the chickum is a more precise upper body weapon Next up is the Cordite. They didn't do too much to the Cordite. Uh, they just reduced the leg damage from 100% to 90% like a lot of the SMGs. And actually, that is going to be the final SMG that we have. Now we're going to talk about the LMGs. They didn't do too much, but they did buff one of them a decent amount. And that is going to be the M4 LMG. They actually buffed the fire rate from 545 to 628. So a pretty substantial buff. And this is what it's going to do or what that buff is going to do to the time to kills. And we'll let you look at that for a second. Uh, and then another thing that they actually did is they buffed the magazine size from 75 to 100. So another very nice buff in that regard. So I don't know if the M4 LMG is going to be a great weapon. I definitely have to test it more. But as you can tell, it did receive a pretty decent buff. Next up is the S36. They actually nerfed the magazine size from 75 to 50 everything else that i tested is the same uh the ul7 736 i had its magazine reduced from 75 to 30 so the ul7 36 is definitely going to be that uh, lmg that kind of feels like an ar more because it also does have better mobility than most lmgs nothing was changed this season as far as i'm aware again i will test that but it does seem like they made it to be more like an ar and then the final weapon that we're going to talk about is just the chopper all they did to the chopper that i can see so far is that they added the iron sights to the weapon but the fire rate and the damage range values and and the uh, magazine size and all that is the exact same. But yeah, so that is going to be it for this video. That is all the changes I could find inside of COD Mobile related to the topics that I said. Again, there were, there's other things that I need to test like the recoil, ADS speed, mobility, etc. Which again will come in each gun's individual gun guide video. But yeah, so with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, definitely make sure to drop a like and a sub down below. Especially if you want to see all of my future content. But I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Peace.